Yes, sir. My tricker back up in this thing, man. Today, I hope y'all ready to take another deep dive into some of the world's most mysterious oddities, man. Today, I'm reacting to some creepy TikToks that are completely unnerving. But before we hop into that, man, go ahead and spam that like button right now so we can run the numbers up on the algorithm. You ain't even got to think about it later. And then if you haven't already, man, go ahead and sub up, man. Join the family. This is the most lit and active community on YouTube, period. Hey, and to everybody who's already subbed up, man, can you believe that we are already over 20 k subs man i just want to let you guys know all the credit goes to you guys man thank you guys so much for helping me build this from the ground up but let's hop straight into the video man feeling it today watch this youtuber explain this story about the illuminati point of the story is she really wanted to be famous i guess that's, mm -hmm. that's a yeah that's what she wanted to be. and she met somebody um who could promise her that and she met somebody have you ever heard this no she met somebody this is crazy and he was like i know how to make you famous and she's like how and he's like we can turn you into anything like scientology we can turn you honestly it, it may have been may something have been, like that we can turn you into a singer an actor whatever you want and one day he visited her, her apartment and he was like in a suit and tie and i came in and i saw him in the suit and then she's like please leave and she and she closed the door on me so i left and she came up to my apartment sobbing and she was like, this guy, please, you cannot repeat this. And for, for three years, I held the story to myself because I thought this guy was going to me. But they were like, if you ever repeat this, they'll kill me and they'll you and they'll kill anybody that you love. And she was sobbing to me. And she's like, this guy, he came to me. And he's like, he's telling me. She, she was like, this guy came to me. And he's like, I can turn you into anything you want to be, but you have to sacrifice somebody. And I just spoke to my mother and my mom. My mom really supports me. And she's like willing to be sacrificed so I can become like a singer or whatever, famous, whatever. And it was just completely serious, and it was really f***ing terrifying. Really, really terrifying. Like, you believed her. Totally believed yeah. her. Hey, that's the epitome of going over and beyond for your kids. Not me. Hey, that looked pretty real to me, but it was a little too blurry and it wasn't zoomed in. So that's the only discrepancy. This was the first image placed into the background of the first iPhone ever made. So everybody, consequently, that charged their iPhone and turned it on was subliminally programmed to think that this is what the Earth looks like. A lot of people probably turned on their phone thinking that this was a photo from a satellite or something or like a space mission or something when today I'm going to show you a NASA.gov article explaining how did we get the blue marble photo. All I searched was Brian Simmons NASA data. Here you see him called Mr. Blue Marble. He was a data visualizer and designer. Open up said link again NASA.gov and conversations with Goddard talking about him. This is the important section down here though get to said important section and it says the hard part was creating a flat map of the earth's surface with four months of satellite data then we wrapped the flat map around a ball honestly i i don't really think i need to say anything else so Go ahead and share this with somebody that you've been debating the shape of the Earth with and the only evidence that they have is the images that NASA's producing. Obviously, these aren't very reliable. I think that's slightly taken out of context. I think what he's saying in the article is that all the satellite images come back and produce a flat map because if you think about it, it's just a camera taking pictures. And then in post-processing, they splice them all together and then they have to wrap them around to produce the 3D shape. This up. Watch this. Step. 
bro, trippy. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for your patience while we were delayed a little bit. I have a few things to talk about up top, and then we'll get right to your questions. Uh, so first of all, to add to information already provided earlier by the White House, at the direction of the President of the United States, fighter aircraft assigned to U.S. Northern Command successfully took down a high-altitude airborne object off the northern coast of Alaska at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today within U.S. sovereign airspace over U.S. territorial water. On February 9, North American Aerospace Defense Command detected an object on ground radar and further investigated and identified the object using fighter aircraft. The object was flying at an altitude of 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. U.S. Northern Command is beginning recovery operations now. U.S. Northern Command's Alaska Command coordinated the operation with assistance from the Alaska Air National Guard, Federal Aviation Administration, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have no further details about the object at this time, including any description of its capabilities, purpose, or origin. Hey, you know what? I'll take it. Even if it's Project Blue Beam, at least they finally acknowledging the existence of this shit. I don't know if you ever heard this story about this kid who was partying with his friends this one night. They were all having a good time. They are all drinking and shit. His homies dared him to eat this slug. He eats the slug. You know, they're just like, oh, dude, you're fucking crazy. No way you fucking did it, yeah. bro. Yeah, all that <laughs> shit, right? And like a couple weeks go by, bro, nothing is going on. He's like, all right, it is what it is. Randomly, he starts having hella like abdominal pain he's fucking like crazy is killing sickness. him and everything like that and he's just like bro i feel hella sick bro right this thing literally decomposes this dude from the inside bro like one he can't walk anymore he becomes paralyzed like his face literally changes bro like he starts yeah, yeah. losing his hair all of this other crazy shit just because he ate this slug that's like, never it's even so, knew. so it's like we, who would have known about that slug yeah they never warned us in life about those type of things not to eat those slugs. And look what it did to him it literally made this guy die it made him, him it killed him it literally made him paralyzed and then slowly it slowly took everything away from him bro it was like Crazy. i think he became blind and then like you know what i mean damn couldn't talk all damn. this other shit it was taking everything away from this guy until he was done that's great that sounds like agony there's some sort of glitch in the matrix right now i swear to god watch Give it a minute. Sorry for my dirty window. What the fuck? Do I go? Do I stop? I'm confused. What do I do? Police trap. Tartaria, the largest, most advanced worldwide empire in history, intentionally destroyed by the satanic cabal. What's intrigued many of us researchers is the declassified document by the CIA which mentions the deletion of this country's history, although its remains are still everywhere. We've been indoctrinated with a false historical timeline. Our knowledge was erased and forgotten. These buildings were used for harnessing the ether and converting it into free energy. Their boats ran off free energy. The columns were electric and the cathedral domes and towers were power stations for transmission of clean, free, and wireless energy. Later on, the parasites put crosses and other religious symbols to conceal the original purpose. Life back then was of community, of oneness, of health, and of technologies hidden from our timeline. It actually reminds me, I got a clip that I took like a couple weeks ago of a construction site. It was an old building and it was like kind of excavated. And you can see some interesting stuff. Hold on, I'm about to pull it up. Like, look at that door on the bottom, bro. Like, right here. What? I mean, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think of that clip. Like, I could be wrong. NBA is the NBA part of the CIA. Police officers. They've got connections with the FBI. They've got connections with everybody. The NBA knows what you're doing. They know who you're doing it with. They know where you are. They know how, how you're conducting yourself at all times. Don't think they're not watching. They're always watching. And when I get upset, is that all of us, Jalen's from the streets of New York, uh, Detroit, I'm from the streets of New York City. You know, we know this kind of stuff. We know the kind of things that people fight just to protect the few dollars they have. What do you think an organization is going to do to protect their multi-billion dollar investment? Hey, if you pay me $200 million just to hoop, you can watch me all you want.
Yeah, I thought it was just some birds, but when she said they didn't have wings, I don't know. The roof of the only source of food for the community of Crestline, California collapsed Wednesday. Goodwin and Sons Market was covered with feet of snow before caving in. A total of 100 inches of snow has fallen on the town in just the last seven days. Thankfully, no one was inside the store when the roof gave way. Local officials have been delivering food and medicine to homebound residents, while others that were completely snowed in due to unplowed driveways and roads have been evacuated to shelters. San Bernardino County, home to Crestline, is one of 13 counties that has been placed under a state of emergency on Wednesday due to the incredible snowfall totals. Hey, I don't know, all that crazy weather in California might actually be good for the drought. Today, I learned that the US government carved out a secret underground city that they can flee to in case nuclear war breaks out. Raven Rock, like Area 51, is one of the government's most classified projects titled Continuity of Government government or Project COG. And one individual who worked down there for three and a half years for the first time ever spoke on camera, describing to Vice what it's like down there. Located 768 feet below ground, it can withstand a direct nuclear hit. It's protected by not only one, but two three and a half foot thick doors, weighing 30 tons each, and is built on top of springs to survive the shock waves of a nuclear blast. He describes how there are five separate three-story buildings, and of the 15 floors in total, each are big enough to hold 50 to 80 offices. It's described as an under ground city because they have a cafeteria, barbershop, massive water reservoirs, generators, a crematorium, post office, medical facilities, and a command center capable of operating a nuclear war front. And although this was created for the threat that never arrived in the 1950s, in 2023, some spring cleaning may be in order. Hey, what would even be the point of continuing a government if all the citizens get wiped out? Like, who you gonna govern? Okay. So it, we call it a shutter, and it protects the windows from micrometeorites. Okay. The shutters are closed, the windows are protected, and also thermally insulates the windows from the radiation environment of space. So can you shut these things from the outside? No. You can open and close it from the inside. Oh, okay, wait. On the inside, you're throwing a lever or something. Yeah, you're and turning it, a knob. And it's... And it's Open. Yeah. On the outside. On the outside. How do you do that? and maintain a pressure seal between them. O-ring type seals. No, you don't. With a rotating check. All our hatch seals are O-ring type seals. Yeah, but how, uh, so uh, we, my, uh, uh, my brain's. Up here. Let's go inside, we can see it. Okay. okay. Watch all right. your head. All right. Oh, oops, thunk. So you have a whole series of O-rings in here and a shaft that you rotate. So, it, I mean, like on the space station, how many of these would you have? Uh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. You just have a leak. And, 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 and what you, you would do you is... You lose air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole cupola off. And then uh, there's probably a plan, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan for replacing the, the mechanism might require a spacewalk. So my question is, how can you operate a lid on the outside of the space station by manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure? It's it's called real good engineering. And I need a new spokesperson. He ain't know what the hell he was talking about. it was hanging from a string because if it was the firefighters would just cut the string right i mean i'm just i was just wondering um shiny illuminati that don't bother me yeah no, i mean i wish i was illuminati i'd be probably a billionaire uh, people always talk about this illuminati stuff show me illuminati show me that please i had to work for everything i got so far. ain't no illuminati coming to help me with nothing you know what i'm saying i personally man um i believe in god i'm a <coughs> I'm a man who, who fears God and I pray to God, you know, and um, 
I don't go to church that often. I'm not gonna lie, you know, not because I'm not religious. I just don't got the time to. No disrespect. I pray to God every night. I have a relationship with God. I don't have to go to church every time. That's that's my Lord, and I got my relationship with Him. And wherever two or more are gathered, you know, that's yeah. where the Lord is anyway. Right? You know what I mean? But most of the time, it's just me on my knees like this. Devil was licking his chops listening to this interview. I'm gonna hit on a real cool one, which is Mercury. Check this, free energy. See that? See that spinning? That's the magic of Mercury. Now they tell us to stay away from Mercury because it's toxic, but they also tell you that it's toxic because it's toxic to the profits of J.P. Morgan Chase and the Rockefellers <laughs> and all the other people who bought out the energy industries so that they could put a meter on something and charge it to you. Right? That's the whole thing. Check this right here, Mercury on top of a light bulb spinning. And the thing is, is the spinning is very fascinating because when you look at the old buildings from the old world, the sacred buildings, they used to have these brass balls and they loaded them up with mercury and they put them real high up so that they could gather atmospheric energy, which is free energy. The higher you go up, the more energy that's up there. And they would run, for example, a copper wire down into their home and they could use that if they wanted free energy or to light their light bulbs or whatever things that they had in the home. Greedy bastards. Well, I don't think it's a, a conspiracy in the sense that there's, you know, a small group of Illuminati wearing hooded robes sitting around a mahogany table like a scene of Spectre from a James Bond movie. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but of course, uh, you, you used to hang out with those Illuminati in yeah. Greenwich, Connecticut. Oh, that's a, uh, <laughs> we'll get to that later. That's another story. So, uh, but, uh, but the way it, it does work, and I talk about this in the book, first of all, it's not a secret. Society. We know who they are. It's Christine Lagarde. Her first dep uh, head of the IMF, IMF her yeah. first deputy managing director, David Lipton, uh, professors like Larry Summers and Ken Rogoff at Harvard, public intellectuals here in the UK, Dara Turner, um, uh, Anatole Kolecki, um, Mario Draghi, head of the European Central Bank. So it's a collection of central bankers, finance ministers, academics, think tankers, and public intellectuals, and several hundred of them around the world who collectively run the international monetary system. Just wicked, bro. If you liked Skinamarink, you'll most likely love Antrim. This is the world's most cursed film, according to itself. Antrim starts with a short documentary explaining that the movie you're about to watch is cursed and that most people who have seen it have died. It's the most evil movie ever made, and then they show it to you in its entirety. The movie itself looks to be shot on 16 millimeter film, and between the grit of the grain and the imagery and the anxiety-inducing sound design of this film, it is sure to make you afraid, even if you don't know why. There are dark elements in film, 
that can cause people to do things that they might otherwise not do. I found myself comparing it to Antichrist at times, though less NC-17 rated. This movie is more about demonic imagery that feels like a merge of 1970s and 1930s filmmaking. This movie is not action-packed, but it will most likely keep your attention, and it will certainly keep your attention despite the lack of action. I saw that movie two years ago on Amazon Prime, bro, and I'm still looking over my shoulder. The Scary Truth. Doya is seen to be shaving off her eyebrows on a live stream with her head already shaved. This is actually a satanic ritual. Many eyes were raised when Doja brought out a birthday cake featuring the symbol of the Freemason, a secret international fraternal organization. inspired by Dante's Inferno, which is coincidentally a symbolism for Hell's Nine Circles. Speaking of songs, in her You're Right music video, Doja also stands on a checkered floor while weighing her heart and her riches. And if you want to know just how symbolic that is, check out these similar photos of ritualists doing the exact same thing. At this point, it's pathetic. Like, we get it. You're a demon. Like... If you got him at D tackle, you go into the Super Bowl. He unstoppable. He was playing with the water, with the with the with the paddles, the the uh, hydro repellent paddles. So he was bouncing the the glob of water between the two paddles, and one of the one of the community noticed that his eyes were not following the freaking water. They were uh, they were jumping into places that he he had it for a little bit, and then after that, his eyes were completely out of sync with the with the water droplet. But when those guys were playing ping pong back and forth with the water, you'll notice that the girl always is looking above the camera. And the reason why is because they're looking at the the CGI feed. You know, they need to see where the item is that they're playing ping pong with because it's not right in front of them. So once I saw Helmick's video, I really, um, it opened my eyes even more to, oh, okay, because every time I've watched those astronauts, they appear to be watching a monitor above the camera which, okay, I could see doing that, but on the other hand, if you're just up in space giving an interview or playing ping pong or whatever you're doing, then you would have no reason to look at a monitor. It doesn't matter. The camera's on you, you know that, so it doesn't matter what you look like. You shouldn't care about that, but they're always very concerned with that monitor. Well, that tells me why. It's when they're using uh, props. Hey, no cap. You can see the reflection of the green screen off the side of his head, bro. Bro, did we just witness a real-time NPC spawn into the game? But with that being said, guys, that was the video. Thanks for coming to kick it with me. Tell me what you guys think about these creepy TikToks in the comments below. And until next time, y'all take care of yourself. So.